the, the, the way I thought of, of going through today is <clears throat> to address some, some topics. I, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people have heard about HPC. What is the difference between HPC and grid? Um, what is a data cluster? How, does the, how do these things all fit together? Um, the operation or the operating system and the management systems, how does that all um, fit together? GPU clusters or can you actually use GPU clusters or um, how do they, they, they fit together? The concept of bursting to cloud and my personal view of how you do that or what not to do. <coughs> and then just, just some possible um, high level thinking of, of the, the MATLAB side of things and how that fits into, into the cluster environment. So it's going to be just a purely talk and chalk and so just raise your hand or throw stuff if I'm not paying attention um, and we can take it from there. So a thought to start, we're going to just, just draw, draw the architecture of, of what a cluster really is. So cluster has got, got a few basic components and it sounds really simple but when, when we start getting into, into the various details it gets a bit more complicated. So the first thing, well, is you've got compute modes. Nodes. And I'm going to draw a few of these. Oops. So those are the guys that actually do the, the real legwork of things. Um, what we have on top of that, or separate to that, is actually. Data, and I'm going to call it cluster. And what we'll see when we go through all these various topics is that this is actually where what makes your decisions. How you work with data, what you need to do with data determines what you do with compute nodes and all, all of the rest of the things. <clears throat> we also then have something sort of separate. So this one works. And um, that we're just going to call a uh, head node. And that, that really just looks after a whole bunch of management stuff. So, so that, that's pretty much really the, the high level stuff. Um, let's do this as well. And how it's configured. So, so these are the compute guys. And they've each got their CPU and RAM, and they're connected. Anyone know how they're connected? Button? Yeah, with networks. Anyone? Gigabit? 10 gigabits? Infinity band? Anyone heard of those sort of things? Okay, so gigabit is the off the shelf, just normal network stuff. And that you can get away with with very small clusters because the communication isn't too, too problematic. Um, so they connected, uh, how are we going to draw this? Uh, let's just draw a network switch somehow. And they're all connected by the network to each other. <coughs> um, the green one as well is connected. Okay. So the, those are pretty much the, the basic components. We've got network and various reasons why you choose various different types of networks. You've got your compute modes and you've got a head node to do the management and a data cluster. And that um, is, is the, the basic structure of high performance computing. All that really happens is that this then just expands to thousands um, and this becomes a separate sort of um, entity. So this, this brings me to the first sort of topic, the difference between high performance computing and grid computing. Can anyone guess what that, that difference is? Or, or give a definition for, for each of them. Anyone? 
almost, yeah. yeah. Network is, 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 is a big part to play. So it's another. Okay. Can anyone else suggest anything? Please do a combo with balances load. It, it's, it goes more towards what the load is. Does it, the, anyone remember SETI? The screensaver? That is actually a very good example of grid computing. And why is that? Because it can be put on your, your machine at home. It doesn't need to communicate with anything else. So in, in, in a grid, com in high performance computing, every node has to talk to every other node and to the head node to solve a single problem, which means they need to access all of the data. You can't really do that by distributing computers around the world because that communication overhead in a, um, you know, sending a gig of data there to Tokyo and waiting, it will just not happen. In grid computing, you can. So the difference is grid computing has a work payload that is not dependent on any of the other's work payload. So you can literally package up its payload, tell it to do its thing, and it'll get back that information again. Um, or the, 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 the head node would get that back. So, so grid computing can be distributed. A normal cluster can do grid computing and high performance computing, but a grid infrastructure cannot do high performance computing purely because of the network overhead. Does that make sense? I hear a lot of yeses. Any, any questions? No questions? Very quiet. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so, so that's, that's the difference between high performance computing and grid computing. Um, when your network <coughs> scales to thousands of nodes and they all have to communicate, your standard Ethernet networks aren't going to actually make sense. You just cannot handle that workload. And that's when you get to the fancier networks like InfiniBand. So it's just extremely fast and expensive network networking equipment. Okay. 